Welcome back guys, Matt here, Code Tech and Trails. I wanted to talk a little bit about shaders and uh, how they're often done in game engines and programs and uh, just some things I've learned recently that have kind of changed my uh, mindset a bit about how I'm going to approach shaders in the future. And I'm talking about shaders for games, game engines, you know, things that make the graphics look fancy and feel lights and shadows and that stuff, that kind of thing. Yeah, let me show you what I've learned. First, a few observations. If you learn from like Learn OpenGL and stuff, they teach you how to make a shader and if you go off of what most people are kind of doing and show you online you end up with a system uh, where basically you have this uh, shader class handles making a shader and you kind of make some functions to make sure it sets stuff properly on your shader uh, so you pass in the source and create your shader you got to have your source somewhere and you got to decide what shader you're using for me i have these internal shaders that kind of work for very specific scenarios and mainly the one i use when i'm doing most stuff that's just normal rendering will say i have this thing i call uber shader and the more i add to it the more complex it gets don't worry i'm getting to a point and essentially why this isn't going to work in the future essentially as i add more stuff i have to add more uniforms and set more stuff now as as i add more uniforms i end up with scenarios like well what if it doesn't have this and it does have that and just a lot of if else type stuff which gets very confusing after a while like, what if it has no point lights? What if it has no directional light? What if it has tint, but not something else? What if it has a specular texture? So I have these integers for has a specular texture and then, then specular texture. And I probably really just like convoluted and uh, confusing and kind of hard to reason about. And uh, when you try to add another thing and you got to kind of, it's like a cascade of effects of things you got to change in your shader to support it. Or you could just make a whole new shader and have just like a, a million different little shaders for different things you support or different scenarios going on. And it just becomes kind of like mind bogglingly large and just really hard to keep keep working with so i started realizing something and i realized this before but i just didn't understand it so i'm gonna open unreal engine and just show you a thing launching unreal and eating ice cream i've been moving stuff all day so i'm like super hot so i had to cut my hair too it's just too hot not that you guys wanted or needed to know any of that but subscribe if you look at this what it's doing here is it says as it's opening this project editor for some little project i was working on it says compiling shaders down here and you see this a lot when you're working you'll see that it's compiling shaders and everything's lagging things don't look right what does it mean by compiling shaders it doesn't just have shaders ready for like pbr and in different lighting scenarios and stuff so this got me thinking like what are they doing and here's what they're doing well you can go look at the code and see it's kind of hard to find in the unreal code because the, the code base is so huge but essentially what they're doing is they're figuring out what you need and they're actually making the shaders. They don't have a giant shader with a bunch of if else. They, it literally just builds what you're actually using. And I'll show you a good example of this from the Blender source code because they do a similar thing. So if we just Google search for Blender source code, if you go to source and then Blender, but let's look a little deeper. There's some basic shader stuff. They got a path pass through shader. So they do have some shaders that are really straightforward that you need like a pass through shader because it literally just wants the depth. So you don't need to actually do anything. Okay, so it takes a little digging around to find, but I think it's actually under GPU OpenGL. There's all the OpenGL render code. Okay, if we go into shaders here, see a bunch of shader stuff. You can click on any of these and kind of see what they do. This just has a main. And let's look at common. There's a lot of these. There's some math stuff. I don't even know if there's a main in this one. Nope, there's no main in this one. It's just a bunch of functions. So they end up including what they need as they build the shaders. Now, here's where things get really cool. Let me see if I can find this. Okay, let's look at these glshader.cc files. So what you'll see here is they have, well, they have a gl shader file, kind of like I did in my engine, except theirs it actually you know, controls a little bit more. I just make the shader program and ignore all the other stuff once it's created. I think it gets deleted, but they actually hold on to those because they probably reuse them in a smart way. You'll see here things like functions like this, these two strings, and you'll see like some cases and what it does. They're returning const cares, which are essentially strings. And you see things like this here too. Now what these are doing is these are to build shaders. So they have all these functions to build based on what you're doing on Blender. So they have these all worked out to where when you're working with things like the node editor, now I don't know if this is 100% accurate, but it's just for 
case of example. So I got this little starship here. I got it from Open Game Art or something, I forget. But if we go to uh, shading, let's just open a new one of these and turn it to shader editor. And if you go to your material, all right, so you gotta click use nodes and it brings it up over here in your little compositor, in your uh, shader editor. And you get this sort of thing. It's principled, principled BSDF. So based on how you like edit these nodes, it builds you the proper shader for these different materials. And generally you get like a shader per material based on how it's set up. And it's using code like this to actually build the shader on the fly. And then it just includes what it needs to do. Obviously this gets very complicated. It's over a thousand lines of code. It's most, this one in particular is just mostly switch statements, but you can see how they build their shaders. They bring in all their uniforms and variables as needed and, uh, and build it up like that. And it's like, it's just a conglomeration of, oh, well, there's not a whole lot of set shaders. There's a few for very specific things, but otherwise they're like building them on the fly. So that way you're getting exactly what you're needing and you don't have to do this uber shader thing with a bunch of switch statements in it. So that's what I've learned recently about how shaders are often done in most engines and uh, 3D editors and stuff. But for specific games, it is different. Sometimes they have specific shaders for games and like Minecraft, for example. A lot of people make shaders for Minecraft to do specific things. They just, uh, they bring in new ones because Minecraft has specific built-in ones. All right, so I'm looking at, it's just a little demo scene, old world and Unreal. You can see it's preparing shaders down here at the bottom right. So that's one of the things it's doing is it's, it's probably scanning through all the materials, all the models, all the lighting stuff and just building the proper shaders for all your features and shadows and everything so it's going through code probably somewhat like this blender source code but unreal just making it for sake of example because they probably do somewhat of a similar thing i'm sure their code's actually different but the concept's probably about the same and of course this is using hlsl all that blender one oh, we were looking at glsl but it all kind of means the same thing so in the meantime, they give you like some some basic demo uh, shaders that are good enough to display things. That's why they have this preview, but they're not like the optimized ones that get built based on exactly what you're doing and how you have all your light stuff set. And uh, that I thought I just thought that was really interesting. And I don't know if people really know that when they start out, but it's something that's kind of important to realize. Otherwise, you'll just kind of be stuck in the world of trying to make your own custom shaders. And if you're making an engine where you want to support a different, bunch of different things or a 3D editor where you want to support node editing and stuff like that, you essentially need to come up with some kind of shader builder system. And maybe there are some open source projects that handle a lot of this for you already. I'm not sure. Obviously there's the blender source code and stuff like that, but it would take a lot of work to get that worked into your own engine. So that is something that really made me kind of step back and analyze how I was doing shaders on my engine and uh, consider maybe I shouldn't be making this Uber shader because, well, it's probably better to make a shader builder, kind of like Blender and Unreal and Unity, I'll, pretty much all the engines will do. It's probably better to do something like that in the long run than have a bunch of if else it's in a, in a massive shader depending on what's being used because ultimately you don't want these in here if they're not being used and that's kind of where the problem comes in uh, because you're just going to have massive a massive shader with a bunch of unused stuff now will that be better than creating a bunch of custom shaders i don't know probably not because with all the if else it's going to be slow and you don't want that in your graphics pipeline you want it to just be optimized which those shader builders will do but and just as a last thing, you know, if you're making an engine for a very specific game and you only want to support very specific lighting stuff and you don't want to give a ton of options in a node editor, then you probably don't need a shader builder. You probably just want your custom shader for exactly what you want to do because you can still optimize it based on your game. So that's probably the route I'm going to go. But uh, yeah, that was something that just uh, I really think people should be aware of because you don't really get taught that, or at least I didn't when I started learning about shaders. But uh, I think that's super important to realize and it'll probably make a big difference for a lot of people going forward. So uh, let me know. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll be around. Might take a few days off here because I'm probably going to try to get a lot of my moving done. But uh, we'll see. All right. Peace out, guys.